for what you were dealing with. I'm going to guess without seeing it was probably onion thrips. Onion thrips biology is very similar to Western flower. The adult flies in female. She inserts her egg into the plant tissue. It's in there a couple days. It hatches out. So it's cruising around. They have asymmetrical mouth parts. They kind of more, I hate to use the word brass, but they kind of like damage the cell surface there. Um, and that's why you get that white silverish kind of color to them because they're removing the chlorophyll. And if you look, they're through when they're in their early instars, basically toddlers and even teenagers, they're, they're kind of yellowish clear, but you can see the green chlorophyll from the plant in their, in their gut. And, you know, they poop it out this kind of greenish color from the chlorophyll, but they're going to cruise around and feed. And this is kind of, and it, it, you know, I always hate to say things because people take it like, oh my God, that's, it's black and white, but no, it's not. But generally, onion thrips tend to feed more on foliage. Western flower thrips, yes, they can feed on foliage, but generally they are more of a flower problem because they really like pollen. And so Western flower thrips are what we see a lot in pansies and we see them um, in petunias and we see them, um, you know, in lilies because they have a lot of pollen. Onion thrips tend to be more foliage feeder. And so when you're growing cannabis, guess what you don't have present? Pollen. So, um, and, and I think people, because they, they don't do their due diligence and take the time to ID, which I don't expect growers to be able to tell species of thrips apart. You know, that's my job. That's extensions jobs. You know, people that, that can do that stuff. Um, but people guess and they do the matching photos online and you cannot just match photos of Western flower thrips and onion thrips necessarily for ID from a distance. You have to look at the length of the hair on the protonotums. You have to count antennal segments. You really have to get in there. <laughs> but, 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 but the good thing is generally for onion thrips and Western flower thrips, the management is basically the same because the biology is the same. You know, they're, they're young, they're eating on the plants. Then they drop to the soil to pupate and then the adults emerge back up. Where it gets sticky is when you're dealing things with like echinothrips who do not drop to the soil to pupate. It's also a much larger thrips. The predatory mites can't take out echinothrips. So you generally have to spray for echinothrips. But when it comes to onion and western flower, the, the bios work really well, the predatory mites and all of that. When it gets into chemicals, um, western flower thrips have more resistance issues than onion thrips. Um, but that's not something cannabis people necessarily have to worry about because those kinds of pesticides you're not going to be using anyhow. So how do you feel about the SF nematode Swirsky approach following up, you know, a, a couple days after a, a, a couple stuff oil applications? So you can spray How would you critique oil? my... Yeah. So... Um, Stuff oil is fine. Once stuff oil is dry, you can release the predatory mites. But if you're going to do like, you know, two or three sprays of stuff oil X, two to three days apart, yes, that's smart to wait to release the predatory mite. From an economic standpoint, I generally go with cucumeris more because it's a lot less expensive and it works just as well um, in cannabis on the thrips as Swirsky does. Swirsky tends to be, you know, a little more expensive. Um, so, but no, I think that's, that's a perfectly fine program and using, you know, your sticky cards, uh, you know, to monitor, I think is a very, you know, good, good tool for that. So yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you a, that. So a, one thing you mentioned was how they eat the chlorophyll. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways I just scouting for thrips, when you see that, like, I always called it like the shiny leaf surface. Yeah. Is how I see it. Like it just has a different gloss to the leaf where the damage is. Is that unique to thrips? Because no. to me, thrips damage looks very mm -hmm. specific compared to other things. And one of the things I look for is that shininess no, along um, where lace the bugs, damage is. Lace bugs can give you that kind of look too. Um, now, lace bugs aren't a big problem in cannabis, but it has lace bugs have been reported in cannabis. But it's not a huge economic issue. I mean, it's hard to... Okay ever say always, but generally also, um, you know, spider mite damage sometimes can look a little similar, um, but they don't have that silveriness, but I don't always see that silveriness with thrips damage. 
but you do see it okay, sometimes. That's good to know. 